Hello, everyone. It's time for Vanish Chicago and Stories, the podcast. I'm your host, Pico Stanis. This is episode 162, season seven. Today's date is September 12th, 2022. And thank you for joining me today. I have a special episode uh, coming up. I will talk about the 60th anniversary of Family Classics that debuted on September 14th, 1962, hosted by Fraser Thomas. Uh, I did a previous podcast episode about Family Classics. I think it was episode 28 around there. And uh, I only talked about it a little bit, but I'm going to elaborate more. I'm going to talk more about uh, the history of the show uh, it's, uh, and its host, Fraser Thomas, and my memories of watching Family Classics on Sundays. But er- So it originally aired on Fridays, but I'll get into that. Uh, but right now, the program will go into a commercial break. And this program is brought to you by Hawaiian Punch. And here's a commercial from 1979 that features Donnie and Marie Osmond. <laughs> I remember this one. It's it's hokey. It's funny. But endearing at the same time. Uh, you be the judge. So here they are singing about Hawaiian Punch. Thank you, everyone. We're going to go Hawaiian. When you're picking a punch, pick a pick of the punch. Come on and go Hawaiian. Get a rainbow of taste, luscious lua taste. Come on and go Hawaiian. Hawaiian Punch Drink Mix. Seven rainbow flavors. With vitamin C, pre-sweetened. Or unsweetened, just add your own sugar. How'd you like a nice Hawaiian punch? You drink the pick of the punch. Come on and go Hawaiian. Okay, everyone, I am back. I hope you enjoyed the commercial for Hawaiian Punch starring Donnie Marie. I remember this commercial very well. Oh, it was very fun. You know, they're very, those two are very talented. They sing very well. They had their own variety show, Donnie Marie, that uh, aired on ABC from January 1976 to May 1979. Uh to me, it was a guilty pleasure. I watched the show uh, if I didn't go out with my friends or didn't have any plans. But it was on Friday nights, and I, I liked it, you know. And they had this; they had their brothers on. They and also uh, they did a comedy. They had some other singers, uh, and uh, Fred Silverman offered him the show, which coincidentally. He, he had the idea of family classic, so I'll get into that in a second. And uh, one of the they made a movie together, Diane Marie, uh, called Going Coconuts. I remember this. They advertised this on television, and they played at Fort City Theater in Chicago. <laughs> and so part of it, it, I saw most of it, and it reminds me of an old episode of The Monkees. <laughs> you know, there was like uh, there was a they were involved with a crime, and it was kind of silly, but. You know, but uh, but I admit to some people that I watch the sh- I watch the show. Don't even read. They think I'm a weirdo or a nerd. Still think that way to this day. But so what? <laughs> the other thing they did is I'm a little bit of country. I did. I'm a little bit of rock and roll. That was when they're famous. So uh, they're still performing. They performed in Vegas uh, for a lot of years together, and uh, still they still draw a crowd. They really do. Okay. In the beginning of the program, I, t- I said I was going to talk about the 60th anniversary of Family Classics that aired on WGN TV Channel 9 in Chicago. It premiered on September 14, 1962, which uh, this uh, in about two days on Wednesday, that's the 60th anniversary. And uh, I will play a little promo, a little music, and also. Uh, a portion of the beginning and the end of Family Classics. And uh, this is not the entire movie because it'll take up too much time. So it's just an edited part. So right now we're gonna, I'm going to talk about uh, the history of the show and my memories of that. And then after that, um, list, not all the movies, that, but the movies that played on Family Classics that a lot of people remembered and they were and their favorites. So that'll that'll take up much of the time. It'll be fun. Okay, here we go. So Family Classics, uh, like I said before, premiered on September 14th, 1962. 
and it was hosted by Fraser Thomas. And he also did Garfield Goose and Friends. And that started in 1952, uh, but not on WGN. It started in WBKB, which is WBBM. Uh, someone emailed me and asked me, why don't you do the 70th anniversary of Garfield Goose? And I said, uh, yeah, I will, but uh, not, not at the moment, maybe later on this year or next year. And also someone mentioned Ray Rayner. Uh, can you do Ray Rayner Friends? Because he started the show in 1962, which is uh, the 60th anniversary. And I said, sure, I would do that. But um, I posted a photo, well, actually an ad of Bugs Bunny and Friends. And that, that premiered a few days ago in 1957. So that was like uh, 65 years ago. But Ray, Ray, Ray Rayner did not host the show first. It was Dick Coughlin. I think he spoke on the radio and then he did that for five years and then Ray Rayner took over. But that aired um, in the evening at 6.30 in the, you know, at 6.30 p.m. And then they moved it in the morning. So we'll see about that. So those two shows I mentioned, Garfield Goose and Friends and Ray Rayner, I will do, I will do, uh, I will commemorate them on their anniversaries later on. Should be a lot of fun. Okay. Back to family classics. Uh, the idea was conceived by Fred Silverman, which I mentioned about Donnie Marie. And he worked at WGN at the time. And he said, why don't we schedule classic family films in the evening than rather uh, at late at night where, you know, just like when WGN aired a lot of classic movies at night or at 7 o'clock or 8 o'clock. Sometimes they had the morning, morning movie. You remember that? So he said, why don't we air them at, uh, in the dinner hour where children can watch? And it's a great idea. And they did that. And they asked uh, Fraser Thomas to host. And he said, yes. So he was doing double duty as a, as a host of Garfield Goose and Friends and Family Classics. And uh, when it first aired, uh, the ratings went through the roof. It uh, beat the, uh, it was uh, phenomenal, very successful. And uh, the first movie that aired on September 14, 1962, was The Adventures of Tom Sawyer. And that was an old movie, <laughs> very old. And uh, I have the ad for that and my video. I'll get to my video in a second. And... Uh, and there were other movies that aired following that also. Then on, in 1968, they uh, switched uh, days on that. So uh, let's see. I'm going to give you the first date and the movie of that. And here it is. So it was in September, of course. Of that. And there we go. Ah, here we are. The first movie that aired was in September 8th, 1968. And it was The Adventures of Robin Hood that starred Errol Flynn. Oh, I love that movie. It's um, I've seen it a couple times on Channel 9, also on TCM. And it was a gorgeous movie. And it's, a, it's a wonderful movie. And then uh, it remained... On Sunday nights, until it was canceled around 2000. But the funny thing about it, according to the schedule, between 1974 and uh, 19 between 74 and 75, they aired on Sundays and Fridays. So you get uh, so you get a, uh, two family classes for the price of one. <laughs> that's, that's great. That's wonderful. I don't know how that came about. I don't know, but they had uh, they did that. Also, um, what Fraser Thomas did, uh, he was in he he had his he he edited the movies himself because he wanted to see if uh, there were certain scenes that were inappropriate for children, and you know that's uh, you feel cheated in a way, but it was for the best, you know, to see the children. When you uh, later on when they were released on video or aired on cable, they were they were unedited and you see and it's entirely entirely like this I can't say that word and uh you know when we were kids we didn't know we didn't know about that and 
And then uh, the show returned uh, 2017, I believe. Yeah, it did that. It returned, uh, but not every Sunday. It didn't do that. And uh, then uh, Frasier, when Fraser Thomas died in 1985, Roy, uh, Roy Leonard took over the host. And then he stayed until the end. And uh, I liked him. He was a, he's a nice man. I heard him on, I've heard him on the radio. I've seen him on television. You know, he did uh, reviews of uh, movies and uh, plays in Chicago. Uh, like I said, very nice man. But he wasn't Fraser Thomas. No, <laughs> no, no. It wasn't like that at all. And the, the theme song of uh, Family Classics was, um, it was a piece of library music recorded. Uh, and it was entitled Movie Scope. And it was written by uh, the man named Dennis Berry, and he was from England. So when you, so I'm gonna get to my, I'm gonna go to get uh, to my memories of the show. Uh, when I first watched Family Classics, it was probably in the early '70s. Uh, I lived in the Roseland neighborhood on the South Side. Uh, we did not have a color TV set. I talked about this on a previous episode of Family of Chicago and Stories. Uh, we had like a Zenith, uh, it had with wheels, it was like portable. And that's when I first started watching Family Classics on Sundays. And it was a black and white, I mentioned that before. And uh, once the, the show starts, the camera was slowly zoom in the set. And it looked like a study, like a den. And, uh... And the uh, there was a painting on the wall, and it was Garfield Goose. He looked like a he looked like Napoleon, <laughs> and that was done by Roy Brown, as known as Cookie the Clown, Cookie the Cook. And there was a model sailing ship sitting on top of a shelf, and the and below there was the books of the titles of the films, and they were repainted. Like that, so uh, but on the side of the books it said Family Classics with Fraser Thomas, but on the on the cover would be the title of the movie, you know. And uh, once they did that, they showed the title screen Family Classics with Fraser Thomas. Then they showed the book that was uh, placed like on, uh, surrounded by satin, and uh, and then uh, Fraser Thomas would introduce himself and said, and then he would. Say what movie is going to be presented. He presented the title of the movie and he described the plot, of course, uh, nothing to give away. And uh, so, and then before he would say the movie, you say, So, so if you are quite ready, let us begin. He said that at every episode, he really did. Then they show the movie, and then uh, the and then during the commercials, they would show um. The title of the book, you know, surrounded by satin, but sometimes they would show the bookcase and he would show all the books that said Family Classics with Fisher Thomas on that. It's kind of neat, like that. Okay. And uh, then at the end, uh, well, not at the end, during the movie, he would uh, talk about, uh, he would show, he would uh, discuss a little trivia about the movie. Also the actors. I think he did that at times. And then um, also at the end of the show, he would say, what's coming up on next week? And he would hold the book and then he, and then he placed the book back in the bookcase and he, and told everyone good night. And then they played the th end of the theme song and it's kind of sad. And then they show the credits and that was that. So <laughs> that was, you know that's how that's how people remembered it, and and also myself of watching the shows. And uh, let's see, so but when I got when I moved to the Ashburn neighbor in 1974 uh, near Bogan High School, we got our first color TV set, and uh, we bought it at Pope Brothers. It was a Zenith, real console, beautiful furniture. There's a picture of me and my mom and my brothers, and we're standing beside the TV, and it was Bozo Circus there in color. 
Uh, and then I continued watching Family Classics at times. Uh, sometimes it aired at 3.30, sometimes earlier at 3, sometimes at 4. I think it depends on the ball games, you know, the Chicago Cubs or any, you know, anything uh, like a news bulletin or something or something delayed like or it's like a TV special. But usually it was at 3.30 in the afternoon. Okay. All right, and so uh, I created a video about a couple of days ago, and it was for the 60th anniversary, and I compiled ads and music, courtesy of Rick Klein of Fuzzy, uh, FuzzyMemories.tv. Thank you very much, Rick. And I put them all together, and it, it's about 15 minutes long, and I uh, I got every from the ads. Uh, I think there are one, one or two that, they're the same movie, but most of them were all different. And I, the music I put is like promos and uh, the theme song of the family classics. So if you have if you have not seen it, please go on YouTube under my name, Pete Casanas, and or type in the search engine, do family classics, 60th anniversary. You'll find the movie. I posted it on my social media accounts. You can if you're on Facebook or Twitter. You can watch it there or also on my blog, fanchicagoland.blog. Okay. Right now, I'm going to play uh, a promo for the 1961 movie, Francis of Assisi. And this promo aired in 1971. And, uh, and this is also included in the video. So right now, uh, here is the promo for the movie, Francis of Assisi. And it's from WGN-TV Channel 9 in Chicago from Family Classics. So sit back and enjoy. Thank you, everyone. This is a story of love. Love that surpasses the sensual. A love that transfigured all whom it touched. This is the story of a young man who has known ecstasy. He has laughed, lifted his voice in song, pleasured away the night, and he has carried the colors of a very beautiful lady into gallant battle. Family Classics with host Frazier Thomas presents the moving and inspirational story of St. Francis of Assisi tomorrow afternoon at 4 o'clock in color on WGN Television Channel 9. Okay, everyone, I am back. I hope you enjoyed the promo for the 1961 movie, Francis of Assisi. Uh, I remember this movie very well. I've seen it once. Uh... Yeah, just once. <laughs> and uh, so the promos are, were memorable uh, when you watched uh, the show or when you were watching uh, WGN on Channel 9, even during uh, the evening or day, and they would uh, have a commercial for it. And I remember a couple, a couple of uh, promos that stood out the most was uh, Kidnapped. That movie, uh, Treasure Island, also the Canterville Canterville Ghost, and of course Christmas time will be a Christmas Carol. This will be the um, 1951 version, not the 1938 version. They were they are the both uh, movies of of Charles Dickens Christmas uh, Carol, and uh, you can find some of those promos on YouTube. And uh, it takes me back to my childhood when I watch that. It, it's beautiful and amazing like that. Okay. Um, before I get started, one movies, <coughs> excuse me, one movies I'm going to uh, discuss. I'm not going to list all of them because there were so many. I mean, there were like a thousand episodes. So I'm just going to talk about the movies. They, they played numerous times, you know, and because they were so popular, but um so here we go. But before I do that, I'm going to talk about Fraser Thomas a little bit, talk about his biography. And uh, his name was William Fraser Thomas. He was born June 13th, 1918. Uh, he was born in a small town, Rushville, Indiana. 
And uh, he was a magician. You know, he started as that. And uh, then he uh, then he went into television. And uh, let's see. Uh, also, and then he started, and then he came to Chicago. And uh, he started uh, a TV show in 1951 called uh, The Frazier Thomas Show. And then it was renamed... Uh, uh, then another show. Um, well, no, it's the same one, I believe. Yeah, no, it's the same show. And then it was called Petticoat Party. And uh, I remember that I saw a ticket on eBay that had Frazier Thomas' name, and it was the ticket for Petticoat Party. It's amazing. And then on uh, on September 29, 1952, Frazier Thomas and Garfield Goose had their own show, and it was called Garfield Goose and Friend, not Garfield Goose and Friends, no. And then, uh, so they uh, they were there for a few years, and then uh, then later on, then it moved to Channel Nine, and then it became Gar Garfield Goose and Friends. And so I will talk about that show in, an, in another time. You know, go into more detail. And then, of course, in 1962, he was hired to do, host Family Classics, and he, he and he hosted until he died on April on April 3rd, 1985. Now, he had a stroke while he was at uh, WGN. I think he did this when he was doing he was doing Bozo Circus at the time, and Garfield um, because Garfield Goose and Friends uh, ended in 1976, and then the characters and him moved to Bozo Circus in the morning. But then later on, the puppets were gone. Okay. And then uh, the set of Family Classics is at the Museum of Broadcasting. It's on uh, 360 North State Street. It's by Kinsey. It's a beautiful building. And, uh, you know, I feel guilty about this. I have never been there yet. I want to go and see it. <laughs> Maybe someday, you know, I'll take a trip downtown and take a look at it. But the set is there. The, the chair, the bookcase, the ship, the portrait of Garfield Goose is there. So when you what, you go there to visit and view it, you feel like you're you're on the set with Frazier Thomas. That's kind of cool. Okay. Right now I'm going to talk about the movies that aired on Family Classics. And, uh, of course, the first one I mentioned in the beginning of the program was The Adventures of Tom Sawyer. That was the first one. And then the second one was uh, Challenge to Lassie that came out in 1949. They had a lot of Lassie movies. I remember there was The Son of Lassie. Uh, there was one, let's see what else, uh, Lad a Dog. Remember that? You know. So I'll read off the list and then I'll uh, bring up some more Lassie movies. Okay, and uh, one of the movies was Gulliver's Travel. That was a good movie like that. And uh, there was a cartoon series uh, called Hoppity Goes to Town. Yeah, and that came out. And uh, there was a, there's a promo of that on YouTube. You can check it out. Also, there was uh, My Friend Flicka. There was, uh, they had, uh, of course, The Adventures of Robin Hood, which I mentioned that. That was the first show that switched over from Fridays to Sundays in 1968. You also had The Lone Ranger, The Thief of Baghdad. Also, there was a movie called uh, Snowfire. It was about a horse. And they, uh, they loved that movie. You know, it was a white horse like that. Also, The Prince and the Pauper. They had uh, they had The Seahawk from 1940. That's a good movie. And the next movie, which was very memorable, was Tobar the Great from 1954. Uh, when I saw the promo of this movie, it was kind of scary. <laughs> to me as a little boy <laughs> but then i watch it and then when you get older and you start watching it like yeah that was nothing <laughs> it was a good movie i, I liked it so they had uh, captain blood uh, they had that uh the jungle boot um they had the movie the 1941 movie they died with their boots on they, it was two parts and uh, this aired on September 27, 1963. And then the second part aired on October 4th, 1963, which is my birthday. And I used to post this uh, ad um, when my birthday comes up, which is coming up next month. And I, I posted that last year. Maybe I'll do it again. So we'll see. Also, they had the 
science fiction. They had science fiction, other science fiction movies. The day that the Earth still stood still. Excuse me. They had Prince Valiant, uh, broken um, westerns like Broken Arrow. You know, I mentioned the Lone Ranger before. The Boy and the Pirates from 1960. And uh, let's see. Oh, uh, you know what's funny about this? Uh, when uh, Pre President Kennedy got assassinated on November 22nd, 1963, the movie that was going to be uh, that air would be The Adventures of Robinson Crusoe from 1954, but they were scheduled to February 21st, 1964. So they had TV coverage all day long, but it said on the TV guide, which I have in my possession of that. So that's kind of interesting history of that. Okay, let's see what else. Uh, they had... Uh, oh, one of my favorite movies, they had the story of Alexander Graham Bell with, with Don Amici. Oh, I love that movie. That's great. And let's see what else. Also, they had uh, Destination Moon. That was a science fiction movie. Long John Silver, The Palomino. Uh they had two movies from uh, Clifton Webb. Do you remember uh, Mr. Uh, not Mr. Belvedere? It was uh, Sitting Prairie and Cheaper by the Dozen. Remember that? And uh, let's see what else. Oh, another uh, Lassie movie, The Courage of Lassie. I like that. And uh, they played the uh, Shirley Temple movies, The Little Colonel and We Willie Wink Winkle Winky We Willie Winky. I had that too. And uh, let's see what else. Uh, they had The Lost World. They had that. And uh, hmm, lots of them, lots of movies. And let's see. Uh, one movie that stood out the most, and a lot of people remember, was the 1960 movie Sink the Bismarck. <laughs> they loved that movie. I loved it too. And uh, there was a song uh, called Sink the Bismarck. Performed by Johnny Horton. You hear this, you hear this song on the radio all the time. I heard it uh, on the oldie stations in the late seventies and eighties. They still play that. Yeah, it was a very good movie. I liked it a lot. I really did. They also had a lens lamp. They did that. Uh, Treasure Island from nineteen thirty four. The Man in the Iron Mask. Uh, they had the Kentuckian. They had that from 1955. Um, Buffalo Bill. They play this movie a lot with 1944 with Joel McRae. Also another favorite, The Drums Along the Mohawk, 1939, The Son of Monte Cristo. I like that movie. They had The Inspector General. Uh, ah, another movie we got, Mysterious Island. And that, uh, this 1961 movie was a classic. Okay, so right now I'm going to play the uh, the beginning and end of Family Classics. It's an episode with Mysterious Island. It's just, uh, they show, it'll air a little, like in the beginning of the movie, and Frazier Thomas is speaking. So it is on my video. So you can listen to that, but I'm going to play it here on my podcast. So sit back and enjoy, and here's Frazier Thomas presenting... The 1961 movie, Mysterious Island, on Family Classics. Here we go. This is WGN Television, Chicago. Good afternoon, I'm Frazier Thomas, here again to welcome you and act as your host for another Sunday presentation of Family Classics. The year is 1865, the last bitter days of the Great Civil War. In a huge observation balloon, some soldiers and a war correspondent are about to make a daring escape from a Confederate prison. But the weird adventures which await them at the end of their stormy flight 
are straight from the pages of science fiction and Jules Verne's absorbing tale of a mysterious island. So now, if you're quite ready, let us begin. Sunday afternoon at 3.30, Sink the Bismarck, the outstanding screen adaptation of C.S. Forrester's great human drama and true adventure. I hope you can be here to see it. Until then, I'm your host, Frazier Thomas, wishing you all a very pleasant evening and good night. Okay, everyone, I am back. I hope you enjoyed the uh, the beginning and the ending of Family Classics uh, that showcased the 1961 movie Mysterious Island. Uh, that was a that's a classic movie. That's a, cl a classic science fiction movie, and uh, I saw it on TCM, and what, and I noticed there were some parts missing, maybe a couple, not much, and uh, it's not the same. You know, it doesn't have that warm feeling from the TV show. Okay. And so other movies that they had was the Mark of Zorro. Remember that? Uh, Journey to the Center of the Earth. Oh, that's that's great. Also, uh, like I mentioned, uh, Christmas movies, they had uh, A Christmas Carol, but they also aired Miracle on 34th Street from 1947. Oh, I love that movie. That's great. Other ones, uh, The Pied Piper from 1942, Calamity Jane that starred Doris Day from 1953. And let's see what, oh, Smokey, that was the movie uh, with the horse from 1966. Yeah, that was a good one. And let's see what else. So, you know, as I go through the list, they, they repeat the same ones over and over, over and over again. And they did uh, add more. Not much, but uh, there was also The Lion and the Horse from 1952. There was Moby Dick from 1956 with uh, Gregory, Peck, Gregory Peck, I believe. Yeah. And let's see what else. Uh, the Fabulous World of June, Jules Verne. They aired, they aired that. Uh, Oh, lots of them. Lots of movies. Uh, the Song of Bernadette from 1943. Uh, they also had Flipper's New Adventure from the TV series Flipper. Remember that? They also had Jumbo. That was uh, from 1962. It's about a big elephant. <laughs> and let's see what else. Uh, and they, like I said before, they, they repeat them all the time. But it didn't matter. People were looking forward. They want to see it. They want to see this. You know, they want to see the movies again. They had Captain Courageous. Oh, another movie, another one they remembered that was their famous was Boys Town. Uh, that starred Spencer Tracy and Mickey Rooney. That's a classic. I remember the promo of this. <laughs> it's, it's uh, I loved it. Uh, I still watch it from time to time on TCM. And let's see. Also, Mutiny on the Bounty. They had that. Um... They also had the Golden Age of Comedy, and that that movie showed uh, clips from silent movies, you know, comedy films like uh, Laurel and Hardy, uh, Max Sennett, The Keystone Cops. I don't think they showed Charlie Chaplin. Maybe they did. Uh, I'm not sure. Or Harold Lloyd. 
that, that I had an ad for that and I put it in the video. That was cool. I like that. Also, they have David Copperfield from 1935. And uh, so, um, also, An Elephant Called Slowly from 1969. Yeah, I remember that. Also, Atlantis, The Lost Continent. That was good. Yeah, I like that one. Also, Hans Christian Andersen from 1952. My Friend Flicka from 1943. And uh, let's see. Lots and lots of movies. Okay. So I guess that's it. I don't want to go through any more. So uh, if you had a favorite movie, you know, once this uh, podcast is uh, posted, uh, in the comments you could post your favorite movie if you'd like. You know, that'd be kind of cool for me to see all that. Uh, to see what was their favorite movies. And some of them had uh, no. <laughs> So when the show ended in 2000, uh, Roy Leonard uh, uh, was hosting. The last movie that aired was in Christmas, December 25th, and it was Miracle on 34th Street. That was the last one. And uh, then the show returned in 2017. And uh, the movies, and it was hosted by Dean Richards. Uh, from WGN, and he did a good job. I really liked him. And uh, the movies he played uh, was uh, Scrooge from 1951. That was the first one. And then uh, he returned in the next year in 2018, and it was the 1980 movie Big. I didn't see that. I've seen Big, but not on, it was uh, aired on Thursday on Thursdays. But the first, when it returned in 2017, it aired on Friday nights, just like it did in 1962. So that's kind of cool. Also, it returned uh, in 2018. Scrooge aired again on Fridays. Then on New Year's Eve, they showed uh, two movies from the Marx Brothers, Duck Soup and Horse Feathers. And that was that was on Monday. And that was uh, that was nice. I liked that. Also, uh, they had another Family Classics episode from It's a Mad, 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 Mad World from 1963. And uh, they never showed that originally. You know, that's a long movie, and it's still funny to this day. Also, on 2019, um, they aired the 1942 movie Holiday Inn. Uh, it was a Christmas movie, The Start Being Crossy, but uh, I believe... Dean Richards did not host that. I heard he got injured, and then Steve Sanders, uh, who retired from WGN, hosted the show. He did. He was pretty good. I like that. And also, uh, the last one that aired was 2019. Well, actually, uh, 2020 in in January, but uh, that was repeated. And it was two more Marx Brothers movie, Monkey Business and Animal, Animal Crackers. And I love the Marx Brothers. And they used to sh showcase the movies on Channel 9 for many years on New Year's Eve. You know, if you didn't go out or you, you know, or you celebrate at home, you would watch a movie. That is tradition. That is a wonderful tradition. I loved it. It gives me a nice, warm feeling. Watching family classics during the Christmas season is beautiful. It's lovely. It's nice. And it gives you a nice, warm feeling. It's amazing. We need that today. <laughs> Because I certainly do like that. Okay, so that's it for this episode. Uh, for the 60th anniversary of Family Classics that aired on WGN TV Channel 9 in Chicago, hosted by Fraser Thomas, and I discussed the my memories of the show, its beginning, and uh, most of the movies that showcased. It's a long list <laughs> like that. And also you heard the promos, uh, heard a promo of the show, excuse me. And also the beginning and the end of Mysterious Island that aired on WGN, on Family Classics. So that is all. And uh, I'm your host, Pete Costanis for Van Chicago and Stories. I hope you enjoyed the episode. Uh, it's a little long, but I'm sorry. But, you know, but the, there was so much to cover. And because uh, it's a special program. And it's a classic uh, program that aired in Chicago, and it's in our memories forever. And uh, I wish it come back today. I really would. 
That'd be great. But uh, television's changed <laughs> for the better or for the worse. <laughs> okay. I will do another podcast episode soon, probably this week. Uh, once this episode is published, it'll be available wherever podcasts are available. Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, Spotify. Also, it'll be posted on my YouTube channel, Van Chicago and Stories. And I will also post it on my blog, Van Chicago and then dot blog. So whatever is convenient for you or you have time, please listen in. Yeah, this, was a, this was a fun episode. I enjoyed it. Okay, so bye-bye for me. Uh, everyone have a great day. And here's a little traveling music from Ray Rayner saying bye-bye-bye. So take care, everyone. So long. We have to go. Bye-bye-bye. <laughs>